Hello again, everybody. This is Steve Grisetti, co-founder of MoviePix.com and author of the MoviePix.com Guide to Adobe Premiere Elements. And here we are in part two of our eight-part basic training tutorial series for Adobe Premiere Elements. And here we are in advanced view or advanced mode. This is where we're going to spend the rest of our basic training. It's the more professional looking view for the program, and it has many, many more options to it than the quick view does. But as in quick view, to start a project, you pretty much just have to start adding media to the project. If you do that, the program will offer to match the project's properties to the media properties, which is the most ideal way to work and the most efficient way to work. However, there are certain situations where you want to control the aspect ratio, where you want to create a project that has certain, a certain shape to it. To do that, we just go up to the File menu at the top of the screen and select New Project. This gives us a new project screen where we can select an aspect ratio for our project. There is Landscape, which is a standard shape for standard video, wider than tall. There's portrait, which is taller than wide. That's what you get if you take video with your phone, if you hold your phone upright. There's square, often used in websites like Instagram. And then under the social media button, you have all of those options, but instead of having to choose the aspect ratio, you just choose the destination and the program will find the aspect ratio for you. Now, because the program offers to match the project settings to the media you add to it, if you choose one of these non-traditional shapes for your video, you want to ensure that you also check force selected project preset to the project. You want to make sure that's checked. Otherwise, the program is going to switch the project properties around to match your video specs again. So you want to select that. In this particular case, I'm going to create a landscape video. So that's standard video shape 16 by nine. Click OK. And now I can start adding media to my project. Most of the media you add to your project is gonna already be on your hard drive. So to add the media, you can simply go up here to add media and select either to go through the elements organizer or to simply select files and folders and select the media through your computer's media browser. And when I click open, you notice that unlike quick view, the media doesn't immediately go down to the timeline. Instead, it goes to an area called the project assets panel. And the project assets panel has, it's not only a storage area for your media before you add it to your timeline, but it has some, uh, some dynamics to it too that I'm not gonna go into here in basic training. But you can do a number of things to your clips before you actually add them to your timeline. By the way, there's a shortcut to adding media. If you just find a blank space any place here in project assets and double click on it, that too will open up your browse screen so that you can locate more files to add to your project. Occasionally your media is going to come from another source, say a camcorder, and the program has tools for getting media from other sources other than from your computer's hard drive. So if I go here to add media, I'm going to close project assets by clicking on that tab. If I go to add media, you see I can get media from a DVD. I can rip it from a DVD disc. I can get it from a webcam. I can get media, I can get photos directly from a still camera, or I can get video from a camera or a camcorder. I have my camcorder plugged into the USB port on my computer, and if I select video from cameras and devices, that opens up the video importer from which I can grab files off my camcorder. I can actually preview them before I select them. With using the check boxes, I can either check them all or uncheck them all and select specific clips to download from my camera. And over on the right, I can choose where that video is stored on my computer's hard drive. And if the media is added directly to my timeline or just stored in the project assets panel until I'm ready to use it. So lots of ways to start a project, lots of ways to get media into your project, but once you add the media to your project, you're ready for the next step, which is the actual editing of your video. But that's basically how you start a project. You either designate the aspect ratio for it or let the media define the aspect ratio or the specs of the project itself. And then you simply add your media. And now we're ready to go with media in our project, ready to start editing here in part three of basic training for Adobe Premiere Elements. Hope you'll come back for that.